Bet you can't guess what new stuff I got to use in the workshop. This, for action shots, because we do a lot of action here in the workshop. And, I got a shirt with my logo. See any similarities? So I built a bunch of parts that's gonna make the axis, the Y axis here, the Z axis, all the brackets and everything. Did a lot of it um, because I'm sure you guys don't wanna sit and watch a bunch of holes get drilled and everything, but I'm gonna explain how I built it and what uh, the different measurements were and the sizes. But I'm gonna use this so you can see up close and personal. I can control this with my cell phone. I can turn it on and off. I can see where I'm shooting video. But I don't think this is going to work for us when we're doing our action shots of the stuff we're doing. So we're going to go with the regular video. So this is the 6 inch by 5 inch piece of wood that's going to be the clamp for a router. I have a 3.5 inch diameter router. I came two and a half inches from here to here and from here to here. Made our center. That's where I'm going to drill my hole. I'm going to cut these pieces out later and I'm going to make a relief cut through here so that I can put a bolt with the T-nut to tighten this down to act as a clamp to hold my router in place. So have you ever done a piece like this and not clamped it and then have it catch on the bit and then spin around and smack your fingers up against the back of the drill press. We clamp because we care. So when designing this y-axis bracket to come up with this width I had to take the overall width was 58 inches of my rails, subtract 49 inches because 49 inches is what I want to maintain in the way of travel. And that gives me nine inches left over. So the width of this can only be nine inches. The length is the length of the ball screw that's going to run the Z axis up and down plus four inches for the motor on top. These screw holes were set by measuring the distance from the top of the angle iron to the bottom of the angle iron and then adding an inch just like we did on the x-axis. And I just put the screws one inch over all the way around and that way it fit perfectly tight. There's no adjustments right here. I put it on here, I loosened the top nuts here just a little bit slid this across and pushed it into position and just slowly tightened it up as I, went, as I went across and that makes this roll really really well. Now to determine how far out this needs to set, I put this ball screw in here which is not the ball screw that goes here but it has the same dimensions as the one that's going to be for the y-axis and found that I needed to space this exactly a half an inch off of the back from the rail. So as you can see, I put a half inch spacer on there and then it makes that fit just flush. We'll mount that through there so that when the ball screw moves back and forth, that'll move that bracket. These bolts are flathead, so they need to be flush. So when this bracket goes on here, it's going to be just over the edge of those screws and a regular hex head was going to be in the way. So originally, I was going to do this one, but then I had a piece of glue up and that's what I ended up making for my bracket for my router. So to determine the height 
of this side with the angle iron mounted on it like so. I know that from here to here is two inches. So I made two two inch blocks to set this right here. And that's how I know it's gonna mount. And I've got the right height from the face of this bracket, which is perfect for where these V-groove bearings are gonna sit. This length here was just something I came up with. It's really kind of arbitrary. The width was just what I decided that I needed for this bracket. That's gonna go on like so. And then I'm gonna put some angle pieces back to support this so it doesn't rack back and forth on me. I know that from the bottom of the gantry to the top of the torsion box is four and three eighths. From the bottom of this bracket to the end of the collet is three and an eighth. So the most that this ever will have to go down will be an inch and a half, which I probably will never do. But regardless, I'm gonna set this bearing an inch and a half down, which I really can't do because that bolt's there. So I'm gonna move it down to where it just clears. So I'll just put it down about two and a quarter. This one here, since I know I need four and three eighths travel to get that to clear the bottom, I'll move this bearing up to four and three eighths and that's where those two will mount. So I don't know if I did this on purpose or I just got lucky, but when these bearings on both sides, if I take another one, I put it over here, they're just flush with the edge and that's perfect to keep this centered inside this bracket. So I'll just make a little mark here and a mark here. We'll transfer those marks over and we'll drill the four holes and mount those four V-groove bearings. Then I transferred these holes measurements to here so we could mount the back of the Z-drive bracket so we could move it up and down. I drilled these holes here and then elongated them so I could get a little bit of adjustment when I mount this like so. I had this in place, I centered this exactly where it needed to be, drilled a little pilot hole and then set some T-nuts on the back side of that so I could use this with these M6 screws. These holes I drilled elongated them a little bit to give myself a little bit of adjustment so that I could get it to fit tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and put these in here. I'm going to have to spacer these up just a little bit to get this to fit just right and get it all parallel, running square with this bracket. So I've got these mounted on here, just kind of snug. I can slide this right back in. Rails fit right into the V-grooves. We can adjust these, tension them back as we need. I got this set in right where I need it. Make sure I have the same distance all the way. It's got it all mounted. Four and a half inches is the most that we're ever gonna want. So using my drill motor here. Right there, that's as far as it goes. It was important that I elongated these holes here, here and here and on the other side. So when I slid this carriage in there, I had enough adjustability that I could make sure that it was the same reveal all the way down on this side and that side so we could keep this thing square on this carriage so it would move up and down. I used T-nuts on the back side here and here for the pillow block mounting. I had to make sure that 
that these bolts were just short enough so they didn't get in the way of the V-groove bearing when it's mounted up on the gantry. Oh, baby. We almost have a working CNC. So originally, I made this router mount and you can see that when I got it tightened, it's not square anymore and it cracked right here when I tighten it up. So if this thing's not square when I have it mounted like this, these brackets are going to deflect in. So I'm going to have to design something different and I've been thinking about it and I'll let you know what I come up with. So after I made this design and I found it didn't work when it clamped, it got out of square and it wasn't working. I came up with a new design that was not too dissimilar and it was kind of the same thing. But this time I put a cross dowel nut in here and used my socket head screw and that clamped really well. This didn't split out or anything like that. But the problem is that my three and a half inches is a little too big. So my hole saw that I have vibrates too much even when it's in the drill press and the diameter is too big and I can't get anything in here to shim it and still get this router inside there it's just too tight so my newest design is this I'm going to drill holes all the way through here and on here and I'm just going to mount it right into the bracket. I'm going to drill holes through here that will line up with these and I'll put a T-nut on the back and I'll cinch this up with longer 3 8 inch bolts that I'll go all the way through. Then I'm going to go ahead and drill, drill through this way, drill this big hole out again and then I'm going to split it right in half. That way I can shim it if I need to and that should clamp it tight. So we'll see how it goes. Finally got them done. That is in there solid. There is no deflection in this. I don't think I'm going to have to even put a bracket going this way. But that's it for now. We're done. The only thing I have left to do is the ball screw for the Y-axis motion, which that's on back order, and I may have to look for another supplier to get that, so it might be a little while. I'm really happy everything's rolling well, it moves all really stable. I may take this apart, round off some edges, kind of pretty it up, sand it, make it a little smoother. But that's it for now. So the next video is going to be the ball screw. And then we're going to start on the housing for the electronics. And I still have to order all that and all the software. So we're still about $1,000 away from having this project complete. So, see you on the next video.